Art Talk is proudly brought to you by BrandThomasArtSupply.com, home of the Brand Thomas Signature Product Line. And by the Brand Thomas Instructor Team. Go to www.BrandonThomasArt.com to find an instructor near you. Welcome back to Art Talk. I'm your host, Brandon T. And today we're going to get right into this episode of Art Talk and uh, start answering your questions. Uh, last week we talked uh, about tips, things like that. And what I want this show to be is more like a Q&A show. Uh, if there's nothing really going on, we'll just jump right into the Q&As and we'll talk a little bit. But what I want to talk to you today about is a, is a sale that I have going on right now at BrandThomasArtSupply.com. Uh, you can get like 20% off brushes right now and other great deals are on the website. Plus you get a great low price on shipping. Uh, orders up to $49.99 is $4.95 for shipping. And then anything over $49.99, $50 up is free shipping. So not only will you get a great deal on some supplies right now, you can get a fantastic deal on shipping. So it's a perfect opportunity to get some new uh, art supplies. Uh, also, I have a workshop coming up, a, um, a seascape workshop coming up on August 27th. We still have some room left for that workshop. If you're interested in joining me for a fun, advanced workshop in seascapes, uh, go to brandthomasart.com, click on the workshops, and you can sign up right now to join that uh, workshop while there's still some room left. So let's get into answering your questions. <clears throat> And the first the uh, question we have here is from Jill, and uh, she goes, "When do you know uh, it's time to get new brushes?" Um, well, you know, Jill, whenever you get a um, new set of brushes, uh, you can get a lot more crisper, a lot more softer edge stuff. Uh, whenever your brushes don't allow you to get softer edges or uh, sharper lines and things like that, you know, uh, or blending softly. It should be about time to get a new set of brushes. I usually recommend about every year, about once a year, get a new set of brushes. Uh, maybe you get a new set for Christmas or maybe the beginning of the year or something. Uh, so I always recommend uh, my students and I always would get a new set. Every year I would always buy a new buy a brush set. That way that I would have a new set of brushes on hand for that year. Maybe depending on how much I painted that year, I might get another new set of brushes or replace the brushes that I've used the most. And I've really been using the uh, Filbert brush a lot here lately, and the fan brushes I always have been using a lot. So those usually wear out quicker for me, uh, but usually about once a year I recommend a new set of brushes or once um, twice a year or something like that for a new set of brushes. Uh, that way you always have nice and uh, crisp brushes on hand. Or while they're on, or when they're on sale, I would always pick up a few when they're on sale. Um, another question from Jill. After a painting dries, how does one go about changing something or adding something? Do you use Amazing Clear in the paint to do it or what? Uh, well, whenever a painting dries for me, I always love when a painting dries for me because I can go back in there and add more details. Um, the biggest thing I've seen is people ask me, uh, they said they told, they said they've seen a so-called, you know, another artist um, saying you have to have a clear medium on the canvas and I've been getting that question a lot people are saying do I have to put the clear medium on the canvas they're saying it will not stick to the canvas uh, and so on and so on your paint you have oil paint uh, has a binder in it all paint has a binder uh, it's usually linseed oil that binds the pigments together or it can be other mixtures of oils in the paint but most of the time it's linseed oil. Um, whenever you have a dry painting, you can add your oil paint right over top of that dried oil painting. Uh, it's going to stick to it because it has linseed oil mixed in with the paint. And you can get great details. You can get nice fog effects over mountains uh, using a dry brush technique with a filter brush or a fan brush or one inch brush or something. Uh, you can get brighter highlights when you have a dry painting. Now if you want your paint to go on a little smoother then yes, you can add a little bit of amazing clear over top of the whole thing or in an area you're going to work on. The great thing about my amazing clear is that it dries to a matte finish. It does not dry uh, super glossy like other oil painting mediums do. So if you do a 
And if you want to work on a certain area with other mediums, you're not going to be able to do that because without having to put a varnish on it. Because some artists don't like to put varnishes on it. That's just, that's just another step they don't want to do. And so they'll go out and they'll buy oils and they'll put a, put a like say they want to work on half the painting. The other paintings finished, but they want to work on the other half, and they put some, take a linseed oil or something on the canvas. Then that side's going to dry glossier than the other side. But the great thing about my amazing clear is it doesn't do it that way, so it dries all nice and even for you. Uh, you know, tree branches when you thin down tree branches, when you want to make your limbs and things like that, you know, you might use linseed oil or something like that. You notice that your branches are a lot glossier than the rest of your painting, uh, so. That's one reason Amazing Clear is such a great product because it does not um, it lets your it lets your paintings dry evenly. It doesn't put glossy spots here and there to where you have to put a varnish on it. But I recommend putting varnishes on them anyway because it's just a great way to protect it from dust, uh, sunlight, and uh, anything like that, and from bleaching out your colors after a while. I'm just reading through some of these uh, questions. Uh, Bruce asked, uh, do you paint any artwork from photos people send you? Um, when people send me photographs, I really don't uh, look off photographs that much to get, you know, to paint directly from a photograph. I never really did like doing that. Uh, I always like to just get ideas and inspirations from photographs. Even paintings, uh, even photographs that I've took personally. I just don't like to copy an exact photograph. <clears throat> My style of painting that I like to do is not to be a realist, you know, making it as real looking as possible. I like a little bit of that um, painter's look, if you will. You know, that, you know, that, um, this has a little bit of an artistic look to it. I don't like to have a, a painting that looks, you know, uh, sharp edged and all that stuff. You know, sometimes I have little sharp edges and things in there, but I won't have it the whole thing look like a photograph. So usually whenever I get photographs from people, they send me, I just get ideas from them. I'll never copy it to the T. Uh, unless someone sends me a photograph that they took and they want that for a, a commission piece or something. But normally I always do my own thing on there. A lot of times I just work for my own ideas, but if I need some inspiration, I'll get some photographs. Um, you know, I'm building up on a photograph library, a photo library, which I think everybody should be looking into doing that. It's a great thing to have in your studio. So anytime I work from photographs, I always just get ideas from them, and then I put the photograph down. Unless I want to look back at it again, you know, for a little bit more inspiration on it. But most of the time, I want to look at a photograph at the maximum five, four times. Probably about four, three to four times uh, whenever I'm painting a painting, because I don't want to get too involved in the photograph. I want my artistic, you know, my artistic license to take over and do most of the work for me. Okay, so we got any more questions on here? For this one. Well, I got a question on my email about the difference between amazing white and other white base coats on the market. This is one of the bigger questions that I get all the time. Um, you know, what makes my Amazing White different? Uh, my Amazing White was designed uh, to give grip on the canvas. And most amazing, you know, most white base coat mediums were originally designed to do that. Um, but the mediums on the market today have been changed. The formulas have been changed to where they're not the same. I get so many people uh, contacting me that their mountains are not coming out right. You know, they bought the paint they bought the right paint supposedly they bought the medium they bought the brushes but they cannot get their mountains to break on the canvas um, they just can't get what my mountains look like they can't get that breakage going and a lot of times it starts at your base coat and that's something that I figured out after teaching for a long time and painting for a while that the base coat was one of the bigger issues in highlighting your mountains it wasn't really the titanium white you was using or whatever mixture you was using, it was mainly the base coat. If the base coat is not going to give you grip on the canvas, your paint is not going to stick to it properly. Your paint's going to be oily. It's going to just uh, not run. That's going to run off and look smeary looking. You're going to get a great look. So a lot of the mediums on the market are too oily. Uh, that's one reason why they don't they don't do very well for you in this wet on wet technique that we use. 
Uh, my Minium has more pigment in it, which is going to give you more grip as well. It has less oils in it, and it's and it's got a special binder in it that helps uh, keep everything going for you smoothly, gives you more grip. I also have a non-toxic Amazing White that I've uh, worked on, and it's actually already done. Uh, I'm just debating on whether to bring it on the market or not, uh, but it works really well uh, also. But the Amazing White difference is it gives you grip, it has more pigment in it, it's going to... Uh, get you great smooth blends on your canvas the proper way It's gonna allow you to highlight your mountains and, and layer uh, paint a lot a lot easier Okay And let's see here One other question here uh, That I get a lot of times Let's see here Okay Oil paint this will be our last question of the day. It's oil paint. This is a question I get a lot of. Uh, and that question always, uh, you know, yeah. many artists will tell you, to, you know, they use hard paint, you know, really thick paint that looks like concrete. Or they'll get paint that is runny, very runny and smooth. Or they'll, you know, many artists will say in the middle as far as it goes. It's creamy, but it's not too runny. It's not too firm. And that's where I'm at. I like my paint to be right in the middle in consistency. That way um, I can do what I want to with it. If I want it to be thicker, I can let it set out, let it get a little thicker, you know, at the air, you know, start curing the paint the way it gets a little thicker. Or if I want it thinner, I can just dilute it just a little bit, it's going to be thinner for me. What I tell people to do most of the time is look at your paint. If it's really, really shiny, it's going to be too oily for you. If it's really matte looking, not very shiny at all, it's going to be too thick. So you want something that has a little bit of a shine to it, and that's what you want to use. If it's got too much of a shine, it's going to be too, too, too uh, oily for you. So the oil paint that I use is Grumbacher. It's the pre-tested. You can also use the Academy line if you can't afford the pre-tested. Uh, they're both great uh, paints to use. I really enjoy them. Um, and they're not very expensive at all. You can find those paints in almost any art supply store. Uh, most of the time, any art supply store has, you know, a kit uh, that you can pick up. So I hope this answers some of your questions. Uh, we're going to have a lot more on here on the show. If you have questions but need your questions to keep this show going, I get questions all the time so I can keep it going anyway. But I want your questions. I want you to directly ask me something so I can answer it right here on the show for you. Uh, if not, I'll just take one of the many questions that I get a lot of times and answer them on the show as well, like I have today. So I hope you enjoyed this little episode of Art Talk. Uh, you know, if we have any more things coming up over the weekend, we'll also add it to the show. Uh, season 5 of the show is about to start production. No, last week we said we were getting ready to start production, but we are. We're almost there. Uh, I just have a few uh, minor things that I have to fix on the, um, on the show. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, and I hope I answer some of your questions. Until next time, I'll talk with you real soon.